inside for the 8th Annual Super Sophomore Camp. It is the top 20 game. I'm Joel Hillsman, joined by David Dickerson. We had an enjoyable top 40 game, the top 20 game. Now, what you live for, two 16-minute halves. It is the white, it is the red, and the talent is on the floor and underway. The tip was won and controlled by uh, McDaniels, and he came down and got the hoop easy. Two 16-minute halves, 2-0, the white in control. Yeah, great pass we got uh, uh, from R Rashad McDaniels, a uh, great player who was actually our uh, outstanding uh, MVP uh, Fab Frosher last year. There's a drive and a layup. It is good. On the drive was Dominique Allman. Kick out. Oh, now there's a pass down low. Easy layup off the window. Sharing and carrying the easy layup. Tamil Brakefield. Brakefield with the lays out of Huntington Prep. Going to go baseline, dunk it home. Oh, swing on the rim and send it in. Isaiah Adams, a booming jam. Isaiah Adams is an absolute gem. Had him on my team uh, this weekend. Talk about offensive talent. He might be, oh, I don't know, a buck 70. 6-7 is what they <laughs> list him as yeah, out but, of Paxson. And he might be 170. I, be, might, I might stretch it, but, man, he is a ball player. Mississippi's uh, uh, got to be uh, one of the top uh, players in Mississippi altogether, not just, uh, uh, mm -hmm. you know, as a rising uh, sophomore. Long three ball. It is in and out. Rebound is going to come down. Best and shooter in the camp, yes. uh, Miles Studi, Gonzaga High School, Washington, D.C. He's, a, he's actually a Minneapolis. Uh, Minnesota transplant, uh, uh, been in our area a very short period of time, but uh, but a ball player. Shot the lights out. His mom actually did a little quick mini clip of some of his play earlier this uh, during the camp, mm -hmm. and it was it was quite impressive. So I'm 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 glad to get to see him, and of course playing in Gonzaga, we we know what that's all about in the WCAC. Oh, absolutely. Uh, that they were uh, they won the whole thing this year. Impressive fashion, too. Yeah, great uh, great group of teammates. All Fab Frosters and Super Softers. Uh, 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 Chris Likes uh, being the highlight of that group. Uh, Eddie Scott uh, heading to Penn. Chris Likes is, is going to Miami. Uh, Prentice Hub will be returning with, uh, with Miles and um, being heavily, heavily recruited by several ACC programs. Beautiful so. move there by Gerald Dokes. Man. Talk about hang time on the reverse. Yeah, Gerald had a had a, a very good weekend. Uh, one of the sneaky players because uh, he doesn't, you know, he's not necessarily big. He's a he's a thin kid, but he can get to the hoop. A very good pass there that uh, didn't get a finish on. Corey Walker hit the three and now trying to get the dunk. Corey Walker, 6'5", out of Bishop Snyder in Jacksonville, Florida. Breakfield on the end, other end for the dunk. And Walker, 16.4 points, 11 boards, a double-double as a freshman. Not bad. But now you got to build on that. Exactly. And that's the one thing that you can even see. You see the upside for every athlete that is out here. The mm -hmm. room, of course, for improvement is always big, but you still see the potential just going into your sophomore year. There's a three ball off the hill of the rim, no good. It is 14 to eight. Just over three and a half minutes gone by, a foul, and we'll go in for two points, and Jalen Sinclair on the drive. So the Red has an eight point lead. There's a crossover pull up by McDaniels. Good, he bottomed it out. Yeah, super talented kid. Uh, now with uh, Mocan Elite, uh, St. Louis guy though. Yep. Uh -huh. Stutz wanted it. He wanted to pull it, getting looked off. There's a step back, forced the three, but he bottomed it out, pulling the three. Nassim Khalid, Khalid 6-1, out of first coast in the Jacksonville area. So two Jacksonville area products, Duval County representing. And what do you know about Duval County, uh, Jay? That's the Jay world's Hilton. largest <laughs> cocktail party in October. That's Jacksonville and Duval County. That's Florida. First coast. Not much to do with basketball, but we can we can uh, uh, we'll give you a pass on that. Hey, I always figure, sometimes those are where some of the best basketball players are hidden because everyone's talking about football. <laughs> There's a booming jam. Isaiah Adams with the left hand across the lane. Yeah, Isaiah coming back again. Uh, just a uh, 
Super explosive uh, uh, kid. Long, got great basketball instincts. McDaniels picking up where Devontae Davis left off. Paxton, and he is he's another Jacksonville kid as well. Yeah, uh, Paxton. So there you go. Yep. Paxton High yep. School. Paxton, yep. Three of them. Florida well represented. Step back. There's a corner three by Breakfield. Good. Breakfield showing the range in the corner with the left hand. So now Breakfield. You've seen him on the SUV TV network since the season has ended. A long deep three off the hill of the rim. No good. Automatic substitutions will be coming up here in just a moment. Jalen Colt into the game. There's a drive. Breakfield. No good. Breakfield lost it. Breakfield comes away with it again. Dips it, and it will go out of bounds. And we will go have an automatic substitution. So we'll quick take this quick time out right here, the SUVTV.com. Welcome you back. We've had the substitutions now, and I'm not I'm not gonna I'm not even gonna shy away from it, David. Number 33 in white, Namir Burnett. That's who I'm ready to see. Morgan Park, a very impressive 3A run. They lead Morgan Park to the championship with wins over uh, Simeon and Curry. I, I, I just, I'm so glad to be. Able, I've seen film. Of course, but right. you know me. I like to put my eyes on him, and I, I, he's the guy right now on the floor that I'm really anxious to see. Well, he had a great weekend. He's full of potential. Uh, and as you mentioned, you know, Morgan Park uh, really uh, now in that top tier of, uh, of schools in Chicago for many years, you know, just, just dominated by Simeon and, and, uh, and Whitney Young. Uh, but Morgan Park has really, really come on here the last, uh, last couple of years. 24 points, 6 of 10 from 3 in the state title game as a freshman. And in warm-ups, he was shooting them from Deke, and Coach Nick Irvin just flat out tells you he thinks he's going to be an NBA superstar. Wow, that, you know, that's, it's, it's early. It is. Uh, <laughs> but, I mean, that's the confidence of a coach. But sure. when you get a freshman to come off the bench in the state title game, yeah, that, you know. Well, I, I had some great experiences with him. Uh, he is a, uh, a great uh, student of the game uh, this weekend and, and going through uh, uh, station work. Um, uh, was one of the better players, even even on defense, some of the defensive stuff that we were doing. Uh, you know, he took to that very natural. So I, I was, I've been very impressed with him. Eulis got the board and tried to push the break. It is a kickball. It will stay with Team White. Aaron Eulis on the floor. Marion Catholic, also Chicago area, 5'10 and a point guard. And, of course, you just kind of like what he's been doing since his 7th and 8th grade year, now in control. Sends it over on the right side. Yeah, you'll, matters. you'll notice, uh, Aaron, the, the name might be familiar it is. Uh, to, uh, to some of the basketball fans out there. He is the younger brother of, uh, of Tyler Eulis, uh, who uh, one of the most esteemed uh, alumni of, uh, of our camp here, uh, both Fab Frosh and Supersoft, uh, and one of the finest young men that we, uh, we've had the pleasure of knowing. Uh, now with the Phoenix Suns, uh, just uh, finished off a great uh, rookie year uh, where he uh, he started the second half of the season for the Suns. And, of course, uh, a Kentucky product. Yep. Got himself a national championship in Kentucky. And you guys just, just watching Aaron play, even from his seventh and eighth grade stuff, you can see his poise and control uh, so far in the game. And Euless. We'll have it at the point guard spot now. Comes and gets the screen from Zed Key. There's a drive. Eulis with the left hand and follow. Finish it in. Aaron Eulis left to right. And using the screen from Zed Key. Zed Key out of Brentwood in Long Island, New York. And he has some prestigious accolades that I just want to bring out outside of the floor as there's a layup there. And I'll do that when Zed Key finds his way into the scoring column, which may be right now with a booming dunk. Zed Key. He was a president awarded. Outstanding academic achievement. He was also honored as the Black History Month Award from the Suffolk County Legislature, Monica Martinez. So very impressive off-the-floor accolades at a young age for Zed Key. 
Yeah, that, that it tells you that uh, there's a little bit more there than than, uh, than basketball, and he's a great basketball pro, uh, prospect. You can see his uh, his size and uh, uh, got some great athleticism as well. Long, deep three. Oh, an air ball. No, somebody opened the door. Burnett missed from the right wing. It's no good. 34 to 17, so the top 20 game has not been as tightly contested as the top 40 game. Crossover, dribble move by Miller. Miller now kicks it to the top, and there's Sears. Sears will put it on the floor. And now we have our special guest. Oh, David, I was going to give my seat up. No, well, you have to give your seat up to the king. I'm the uh, youngest when, one. I'm supposed <laughs> to give it up. When the king, when the king comes in, uh, you also, uh, uh, you know, you have to, to show favor, and uh, uh, and that's what I'm gonna gonna do here today, uh, folks. We've just been joined by a young man. We were we were just talking about a little bit uh, with uh, in uh, in Tyler Ulis, uh, Phoenix Suns. Uh, rookie guard this year, of course, uh, uh, Kentucky product, also Marion Catholic, and more importantly, more importantly, uh, uh, Fab Frosh and Super Soft uh, Camp legend. Uh, uh, maybe uh, uh, our most um, uh, impressive uh, uh, camper uh, over the 11 years uh, that we've been we've been doing uh, doing this program. And certainly one of my uh, my favorite kids. Uh, Tyler, how are you, man? I'm good. You know, it's good to come back. You know, I get to see my little brother play, uh, watching his game get better, and see him grow up to the player he is. Yeah, he's he he really um, and it's always interesting to me because he's a he's has a different style uh, of play uh, than his and than his older brother. Uh, but he is still a you know a, a pass first uh, point guard has a. Um, Maybe at this this juncture, uh, I might be jumping ahead a little bit by saying uh, at this juncture, maybe shooting the ball a little deeper and a little better uh, than uh, than you were. Uh, definitely, you know, he, he, that's something my dad's been talking about. It's funny. A couple years ago, when I left, he didn't have that jump shot, but you know, he's added a lot of range. He's been working on his game, and I'm happy to see him getting better. Well, great, man. Well, look, let's uh, let's talk a little bit about um, uh, your experience um, uh, with the with the camps because I know. You know, when you first came, we, we had Fab Frosh uh, in Chicago uh, the year that you participated. And of course, that was uh, that was home for you. But uh, for us, all we knew was like, well, you know, they, they, this they, everyone says this kid can play. But all we knew was is that you were the fastest kid in the country at that time. You had just won the 100 meters and 200 meters uh, AAU championship. You were just just literally coming to camp off of that. It was like, okay, well, we know he's going to be fast, but can he play? Oh, right. You know, I was smaller. Aaron's a lot bigger than I was. But, you know, me and Emmanuel Moutier were on the team who's also a pro now. Right. You know, our camp, I think we had probably about 10 pros and, you know, guys were playing overseas, still in college now. So, you know, we, we had a lot D'Angelo of D'Angelo Russell. D. Russ. Yeah, uh, everyone. Cliff, Jawil. Uh, we had a lot of great talent here, and I feel like, you know, these are the next to come up just like us. And, you know, it'll be fun to watch what they do. Yeah, absolutely. Tell, tell, tell the um, uh, uh, our uh, our listeners, if you will, a little bit about um, uh, the experience for you. You obviously are um, uh, have to prove yourself uh, as a smaller player. You got to prove yourself every day, every night. Uh, you know, you've got a uh, a national championship under your your belt. You play the, the top program in the country, uh, but still. Still, people want to talk about, well, what you can't do. Um, uh, give our listeners and maybe some, maybe some of our kids some, uh, uh, some wisdom uh, about, uh, about sticking with it and, uh, and learning uh, to take advantage of what you, what you do best. Uh, you know, just as long as you work, you know, have the confidence in your game, it doesn't really matter what, you know, certain scouts or, you know, certain people watching say. As long as the players respect you and on the court, you know, you're taking care of business. It all work out for itself. You know, I feel like that's how it's always been with me because I've been smaller and, you know, I'm not the ideal size for an NBA player. But, you You're know, not. It is what it is. So, <laughs> you know, keep playing and let my game get tough. Well, good. Yeah, and, that, and that's, uh, that's, that's great, great advice. Uh, you know, uh, you had uh, probably one of the most uh, unique uh, recruiting situations, too, for, 
for a guy who found himself, uh, uh, you know, being a, a top draft pick uh, late in the game. And I can remember talking with your dad on several occasions. He was like, well, we just don't know what we're going to do. We don't know what's going on. I know you at one point you were leaning towards Iowa. And uh, uh, the Kentucky offer and courting came really late. Uh, and I can remember fighting with, with, with certain scouts and college coaches saying, no, he's the best point guard in this class. It's like, oh, no, no, no. You know, he's, he's, he's this tall, he's this, he's that. The Kentucky situation came late, and, 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 uh, and I know for a fact it came because Coach Cal uh, uh, saw some things. They got deep into the final four, the final eight, and saw some things. They didn't have the lead, kind of leadership that they needed, and they reached out to you late. Talk about uh, that process a little bit. Um, you know, I didn't have a lot of schools early on, but, you know, throughout the EYBL, uh, my last year, my final year before my season, high school season, mm -hmm. my senior year in high school, um, most of the major schools came. Uh, but, you know, the way I was playing, we wanted to wait it out a little. You know, I kind of was leaning towards Iowa or Michigan State, mm -hmm. which is, you know, Michigan State was a school I always wanted to go to. But, you know, I was getting interest from Kentucky. So, you know, we waited, we waited. Uh, you know, Tyus went to Duke. Emmanuel, uh, you didn't know what he was going to do, go overseas or, or SMU. So, mm -hmm. You know, I just felt like I was the only guard left on the list. And, you know, when it came down to it, uh, KP and Cal made a decision, and, you know, it worked out for the best. Great. And that experience uh, playing for Coach Cal, just talk about that experience playing to Coach Cal and, and David mentioned the championship you won, but just overall, what are you able to soak up in your time under Coach Cal at Kentucky? Um, it's just, you know, him as a coach. He's, he's hard on his guys, but, you know, it's because he wants them to be the best. That's why you see him pushing everyone to go to the NBA. It's not like he's forcing you out of school to bring the next wave in. He just, if he, if he feels like you're ready, he's not going to lie to you and do his best for, you know, the program. He's going to do his best for the kid. You know, like my freshman year, he, he told me I should come back. I came back last year. He told me there's no way. So, you know, he, he's great. He's a great coach for that aspect, and you know, I feel like he, he just wants everybody to be the best player they can be. And then obviously he developed the game, but what is the, one of the things that you take away that he really helped you enhance your game in your time there in Lexington? Uh, just he just really just let me go. You know, I was just big for me when coaches you know give me the the full trust of the game, and you know he did that uh, with it being the, the biggest program in the country. Him doing that enabled me to have a lot more trust in myself and faith in my game. And, you know, it, it just worked out, like I said. Well, now, the one thing I want to know, you saw Devin Booker hang 70 this year. <laughs> I mean, just talk about seeing that firsthand and, and just kind of relay that to some of our listeners. Because, I mean, you don't see that every day. Yeah, Book, you know, he, he's, a, he's a crazy scorer. He was always labeled a shooter, but, you know, I always knew from working out with him and, you know, being one of my closest friends that, you know, he, he was legit and had a lot of game to him, man. He, he's proven that right now. You know, no one's dropped 70 in the garden, so you know, you know what that means. Jordan, Kobe, all those guys, LeBron haven't done it. You know, I feel, I'm happy for him. You know, it was crazy to see and witness, but you know, it, it's a lot more he's going to show the world, and you know, I can't wait for our team to grow. How are y'all one-on-one -on -one battles in practice? Uh, we don't. We, don't, we stop playing at Kentucky. We, <laughs> we just play every night. But uh, he cheated one time. He didn't say I cheated, and we, we just dropped it from there. Okay. All right, then Tyler Eulis, man. You, you you done done? Yeah, no, I'm and I'm I'm just about done. I, I wanted to, wanted to thank him for um exactly. uh, for dropping in because um uh this is this is uh, important. Um you know, again, probably, you know, one of the best uh, uh stories that you can have. And let me tell you something about great players. Great players always have a great story. Mm -hmm. Okay. They're not you, you don't just fall into this thing. Uh there's always a story behind uh, uh, what what great players have been able to accomplish. Um, you not only you're talking about beating the odds, because you know what you've done is the equivalent of winning the Powerball in terms of odds. Uh, and uh, and so we're we're extremely proud of you and um, and glad for everything you've done and for everything you've done to uh, uh, to help the kids behind you. So looking for big things from um, uh, from Aaron uh, uh, too. Uh, because uh, he's he's got a pretty good tutor, so yeah, can't wait to see what he develops into. Big years coming ahead of him right now. Yeah, and uh, and then you know, of course, the competition is is always uh, always tough in uh, in Chicago and Illinois. So 
So looking for big things. Well, appreciate you, you stopping in. Uh, you know, uh, bless, uh, Thanks, God bless Tyler. both yeah. you and, and James and the, and the family, man. Yeah, appreciate appreciate you. you. All right. Tyler Eulis, our special guest, alumni, Kentucky alum, Phoenix Sun. Some good stuff there, David, man. And like you said, there is always a great story, man. And when you're able to know about that story firsthand, is if he just walks in the mall, ain't nobody gonna know that that's Tyler Eulis. No, no, I mean, and he's a humble kid. Uh, he has stayed in touch uh, 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 with uh, with me since uh, since he's been a ninth grader. And, and uh, when he's had questions, uh, you know, he's called, or his dad James has called, and uh, just a uh, fantastic uh, uh, kid, a fantastic family. And uh, so everything that's good that's coming to Tyler, it's because um, uh, of the type of, uh, of kid and family he is, he's had. And you know what he also did that time talking with you? He helped tighten up this game. This game is tightened <laughs> up now. It's a five-point contest. Yeah, actually some defense being played. Yeah, it has tightened up. We are now in the second half. A minute and I, a minute gone by. And uh, Aaron Eulis now in possession of the basketball. And he has showed flashes. There's a hesitate and a float off the window. No good. Yeah, what he does really well is he, he uh, he's able to probe uh, and, um, uh, you know, make things happen, watch uh, guys get in position to pass. And that's a real art form as a point guard because uh, you got to do that, and you have to do that with efficiency. You know, it can't be, um, you know, after having ta taken, uh, you know, 45 or 50 dribbles. Uh, most of the uh, best uh, uh, high school conferences now have morphed into using the 30-second clock. Yes. Um, some of them haven't. Some have been, been very resistant it's to it. It's still coming. It's, yeah. it's, it's going to eventually come. Well, and the girls. And yes. The funny thing is the girls, are, you know, are pretty much on board almost all around the country in the 30-second clock. But uh, uh, that is an art. And, uh, you know, if you can do that again without uh, being, you know, as we say with point guards, ball dominant, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to the point where your guys are standing around watching you. And, uh, and again, he's probing, you know, was looking for the passing opportunity and, and had an opportunity to get all the way to the hoop there. And that's one of the things I noticed when I was just looking at some tape of him, you know, throughout his earlier seventh, eighth grade and then a little bit of his freshman year. He makes, he makes the basketball pass, the mm -hmm. simple play, and when it's not there, then he has oh, the ability steal. to go ahead and finish it. Yeah, McDaniel, who's played well, blew the layup. They tip and fight for the rebound, coming away with it now is Miller. Dumps it off down low, and there's a slam dunk. On the other side, boomed home by Sean Robinson. Yeah, good pass by, uh, by Miller as well. Really been very impressed with him. There's a pull up, a long three, no good. It is off the hill of the rim by Cone. And Cone, he actually, I got to see him in the CP3 Rising Stars event, and mm -hmm. he just took over a couple of the camp games and just, and he was, it was it was funny. He was stacked against a team that really was they had the advantage in point guard length on him. That did not change the way he attacked the basket and how he played. There's a dunk by Burnett. Yeah, Morgan Park guy. Played with a smile. The guys, are, the, the, it is competitive, but it is still very fun. There's a jump, the lefty, a long three, front iron. It is no good coming off his Sears. Here's Zed Key. Zed going to show the handles in the open floor and finish on the right side. Zed Key, 6'6", 200, Brentwood, Long Island, New York. Yeah, I think he's going to be a little bit, he's going to get a little bigger too. I would have to agree with that. McDaniel has been aggressive in the steal and lay. And mind you folks, I'm talking about a kid that's 6'6", six, 6'7". Six, six, it's, uh, you know, probably 235. Yes, uh, I generously said 200. <laughs> Now this, oh, yeah. this, that's a big move. Now this is a this kid is out of Brooklyn. Uh oh. And I absolutely, I absolutely love Brandon Weston this weekend. Yes, uh, Weston has played well. Uh -huh. he, he hit is, a couple threes in this game. He is big time. He's very he's sneaky explosive, uh, where he was actually getting, uh, you know, he would get a step and and you wouldn't think anything of it, and then boom, he would explode yeah. for a dunk. Gone. Uh, uh, great, uh, the ability to, to bounce back really quickly and get tip ins. Good player. So Zed Key is up. He went up for the block, and Weston went up with him. 
and Weston used that weight there. So they'll just bring Zed over, check him out, make sure he is okay. Eighth annual Super Sophomore Camp right here on the SUV TV. I'm Joel Hillsman, joined by David Dickerson. It is a four-point contest as we've played the final 11 minutes here in the second half, and the game has tightened up at one point. The Red had a 17-point lead. White has trimmed it down to four, have not taken the lead, but they've trimmed into it, and the competition has kind of heated up, and we saw that with Zed going in for rim protection and Weston using the body to continue to score. Yeah, I haven't seen a lot from, uh, from our Arkansas uh, friend, uh, number 84, uh, Chris, who had a, a Chris Moore. Chris Moore had an unbelievable camp. Had an unbelievable camp last year. Um, tremendous athlete, and maybe, maybe um, uh, would uh, probably be the, the most outstanding uh, player uh, here. And, and that says a lot this weekend. West Memphis, and and talked about it making the plays. His stock is rising. He gets that rebound there, having a little fun with him. As he walks it up the floor, 6'6", six, six. listed. McDaniel dropped that right shoulder. It's not there. Coming away with it on the break now is Miller. Miller, tricky dribble behind the back. Miller going to go down the left of the lane, put it up with the left hand. No, tip follow. No, tip follow. Back up and in. Good. Jalen Sinclair sticking and staying with it. Yeah, Sinclair had a great weekend as well. Uh, good guard, really crafty. Cone wanted to make his move, lost the handle. Now he recovers. Now going to go baseline by Weston and put it up with the right hand. That's the thing. Weston had the size advantage. He sized him up, got the baseline, and then finished strong. And also knew that he had to, uh, you know, when he had to get rid of that ball, wasn't the best time for him to get rid of that ball. Something that all smaller guards need to know. You got to know when to let it go. And if you're going to go in there, you got to get it high. Oh, absolutely. Especially if the trees are enough. Yeah, the next level, you know, these kids, um, you know, sometimes these 6'7", six, 6'8", six, 6'9s six, are just as athletic as, uh, you know, as the little 5'9", and 5'10s are. So you're not going to uh, be able to, uh, to just put anything up there because they will, they will send it back. Cone with back-to-back -back lay. So Weston tries to show the range. It's no good. Offensive rebound. Flip on the reverse. It rolled off by Sinclair. And we'll have our substitution. We'll take a quick timeout with them right here. The SUVTV.com. We're back after the break. Here's Brakefield across the lane, kicks it across. There's a long three, short, no good by Patterson. Lucille Patterson tried to pull the three as our crop continues here in the top 20 game. Rebound is going to come off. Good board there by Nate Tabor. Patterson probably had number 43, uh, had uh, one of the best weekends, most consistent. Uh, another, um, you know, repeat performer of a uh, uh, great top 20 uh, Fab Frosh kid and just played great. Uh, Minneapolis uh, kid who is, uh, is going to be a big time uh, uh, player up there. Had a great freshman year. Corey Walker with a nice drive. And I know we're going to begin to talk about this young man when he gets the rebound. He got the rebound defensively for the Red just a minute ago. Breakfield kicks it over to the ref. And that is number 90 in Emmanuel. Oak Pong, uh, who <laughs> out of Huntington Prep, right, Jackson, Mississippi, and we talked about coming over. He's originally from Nigeria, but love the upside on him. Yeah, he's um, uh, he he's still a bit raw, but he is explosive. You know, sometimes um, uh, the guys late to basketball, they they have the athletic ability. A lot of them been playing other sports, soccer in particular. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, coming out of uh, you know Nigeria and coming out of. Uh, the Congo, we've got, you know, several kids here. Well, uh, the matchup there. It's so uh, Akpo going up against Akeem. Akeem and Emmanuel, both right. of them from Africa. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, the, the problem is, is the smaller things, you know, uh, catching, um, you know, and the ball in traffic and, uh, you know, quick learners, uh, you know, to the sport. But as you know, uh, for some of the things, particularly as it relates to big man's play, you have – uh, you know, you've got to do things. Uh, it's got to be repetitive. you got to do them over and over again. Uh, the footwork, they usually catch you on to very quickly. 
And just speaking of that, it, you, we see it trending up, David. What else do you see in the way of specifically the, the Africans coming over and having the success that they've had and continuing to have? Uh, I mean, do you continue to see that trend coming? Because we see it a lot with fours and fives. Mm -hmm. We haven't started to see the wings, the twos, and the ones yet. It's coming. You know, uh, there's a there's a, a young man via Greece that's uh, sitting up there with the uh, Milwaukee Bucks uh, <laughs> that's showing us something uh, a little uh, different. Uh, you know, G is um, is a special player, but you know, again, his development uh, happened in Greece. Yes. Uh, you know, not in uh, in Africa proper. But I think you'll see some of that. I've seen some of that with the um, uh, a couple of the Nigerian uh, Olympic mm -hmm. uh, teams, yes. the 18 and under teams. Uh, you know, I've seen some pretty good guards. But guard play is, um, uh, you know, something still that uh, the, the development is is going is a little slower. Yeah. Um, uh, with that. Um, and we and can have fun with it. Ante Takumbo, I can say. <laughs> right. Well, you know, I, and I started to, <laughs> but my pronunciation comes out different every time uh so big g uh big g works for me uh, a little a little better um it works for a lot of people right and once you say it though you get a rhythm and because he's you know he's fluent in, in greek and yes. greek and a couple of other mm -hmm. languages as well um you know it's, it's interesting uh when you when you listen to uh to his interviews uh, but yeah no I, I think the trend is you know right now and i, and I probably at least Ten times a month, um, I'll get an inquiry mm -hmm. uh, via Twitter, via IG, That's via a good boy, Facebook. Dale. A king put it back. I'm sorry. Go yeah, ahead. Yeah, nice spin. Uh, I'll an inquiry from uh, from an African player wanting to come here. Um, and oh, by the way, coach, can you uh, send me some uh, size 14, <laughs> size 15 shoes? Um, you know, because we don't have a lot in the way of shoes. But yeah, I don't. You know. Uh, in terms of development, you know, coaching is getting better. I got a good friend uh, uh, that uh, is doing a development program in Nigeria, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, so. I mean, I, you yeah. just continue to see it, and I mean, you know, Ike Obiago, who was here with Green Forest, who's now going to Florida State. Mm -hmm. Florida State, Coach Hamilton's got him a couple there. They've been, and Forrest has been, yeah. as you know, Green Forest has been extremely successful. Exactly. Uh, with uh, with uh, with bringing some kids over, and then and just a good group of kids, just yes. classy Always. kids, uh, uh, very easy to coach. Uh, had uh, not only some opportunities through the camp, but. Uh, again, these are kids to keep to, to stay in touch. Yes. Four or five years ago, I've worked with them, and they they uh, they stay in touch. I uh, got a chance to uh, spend some time. Green Forest came up to and played at Dematha. Yes. Uh, this year, and had a chance to um, uh, to catch up with those guys, and they insisted on. Uh, they called me before they came. Like, hey, we're 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 coming, coach. Uh, you know, we uh, we we need to make sure we see you. And I said, well, hey, that's a that's a game that I'm always at. Yeah. So. Um, so yeah, no, I I, I think um, I still think we're going to see see it on a case by case yeah. basis. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, maybe more than a than a trend. Cone and Ulysses sharing the backcourt where were, and Cone comes in and hit the three. I just thought that that was you're so in touch. And, you know, I just see those trends. And, you know, we talked about it in the top forty game, and you just begin to see them continue to grow and grow and you know, be effective. And, of course, we know the household name in Akeem Olajuwon, mm -hmm. but it, the trickle-down effect. Right. And and still with the footwork, and, and that's – I just know of Ike Obiago because I've covered him so much over his four years. You know, his strength was soccer. soccer. Right. right. But the height and the wingspan led oh. to rejection, and there's a booming yeah, dunk. Is. Yes, it is. He has done that all weekend. If he's on the wing, he is catching bodies. Somebody gets him the ball, he is going to catch a body. That is Isaiah Adams finishing it. And that is not the first time he's finished today. Baseline jump, fade away, good, tickling that twine. It's 84 to 80. Yeah, and I, I would say if there is a, is a trend, uh, and I'm And I'm, and I'm using that, that word No, loosely. no, and, I, and, and no, it's actually a good word, and I, I – um, uh, and if there is a trend, it's that um, it was primarily all of the kids were coming from Nigeria mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, coming from uh, from Lagos, you know, yes. coming right from which is which is essentially New York and Africa. Exactly. I mean, you know, just a, mm -hmm. a, a huge uh, uh, city there. 
Uh, but now, uh, if there is a trend, I'm I'm seeing quite a few kids from other countries. I'm seeing kids from the Congo. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, now of course Emmanuel Mudiay grew up here. Uh, you know, he and his brother came here in the early age. But I'm seeing more and more uh, uh, kids come from that area, and and they they um they have a, a different approach. You know, because in many cases it's still very much a war plagued. Yes. Uh, uh, a place to, that with a lot going on. And we just saw that nice move by Emmanuel right there. Power dribble with the right hand across. Mm -hmm. You can tell that that is something he's worked on. That looked a very polished move against Hakeem, who's a solid defender, but still continuing to grow. Yes. Oh, a little, little talk right there. I like it yeah. by Khalid. A little competition. Always good. He and Dope's going at it. Picked up that dribble. Now goes with the alley, and there's the oop that. Adams, Isaiah Adams caught it and finished it off the window. I and mean, I can't leave out Lou Aldine and also as a oh, top Oh, absolutely. Three. Absolutely. And that's one that you say, like, kind of like Anthony Takumbo. He, you know, he came to South Sudan up through mm -hmm. England. Right. Britain and now here. Yeah, and I think then he spent some, um, uh, he's supposed to be uh, coming back uh, uh, now he's been out uh, with some injuries. Yeah, uh -huh. and, with the uh, Lakers. I don't think he's finished. It's just yeah. it's going to be a situational thing now at this point of his career. Mm -hmm. Dunked at home. I know who would take him. Thibodeau would take him. He loved oh, yeah. him. He loved him. Oh, yeah. Loved him in Chicago. And here's Burnett. Burnett pulled from that distance and will pull a little short, closer in, but string music. Yeah, cl a clean three. Namir, Namari Burnett. It is a seven-point contest. The white has pulled within four at one time, but have not been able to catch him. They've got the talent on the floor to do so. There's Emmanuel recovers. He missed it out of Hamilton Huntington prep. Yeah, they'll, they'll pick up the basket they there will. Uh, yes, with, sir. The, with the foul. Nine-point contest now. Euless, Burnett, Brakefield, McDaniel. And Patterson, the five on the floor for the white in the final two minutes. Euless, jumper is no good. Rebound hits the floor. And coming back this way quickly now is Khalid. Step back off one foot, short. Rebound, Patterson. Up ahead to Euless. Euless took the contact. He'll get the two point. He went for the hoop, left, left his feet. And then tried to got the contact as he tried to look off for the pass. Yeah, then you got to try to make something happen. When you do that too often, you end up sitting down next yes. to uh, leaving your feet. To your coach there. Yeah, leaving your feet. There's a pass inbound layup. Good to Burnett. Now they want to pick up full court. It is intense now. Final 100 seconds, a seven-point contest, 92 to 85. The red in possession, and they have the lead. Sinclair, who's had a fine day, no good. Breakfield gets the rebound and puts it on the floor. He's a good ball handler. The Burnett, who tipped, passed it back to him. Breakfield up and in and scores. Yeah, Breakfield has, has a chance to be, uh, you know, one of the best kids in the country. Uh, as soon as his um, uh, uh, work level matches matches that talent, uh, it's going to be uh, people are going to have to watch out for him. Nice drive by Khalid right there on the lay, and that's another Huntington prep guy in Breakfield. McDaniel going to peel it back under a minute now. 94-87, McDaniel, the three ball, rattled in and out. Rebound to the red, and they may go ahead and seize the control and the possession of it. As Nassim Khalid will have it. Khalid, we mentioned, 6-1 out of first coast. And a foul out by McDaniel. 39 seconds to go. Since it is a Titan game, going to get real tight with the whistle, which is okay. Smart, smart, uh, smart play by Khalid, who... Uh Figured out how much time was left on the clock and what he needed to do. Time score situation. There's a drive. McDaniel again gives the foul. And they're having a little fun. Khalid embracing the competition. Oh, absolutely. Rashad, not, and Rashad never backs down. Bound it back. Here's Isaiah Adams working on Breakfield. Goes right by him and reverse dunked it with the left hand. Send it does. home, big fella, Isaiah Adams. This you said attack from the wing, and there it was. This is what he does. He is a special kid. 
Brakefield take that with you. Came back with the three ball. It's a little too late. What will Adams do in the final seven seconds? Look out. He wanted to go ahead and throw the alley-oop. Adams will dump it off, and that will be the contest. A very entertaining ending. 96 to 90, the red held on. And they have a dunk at the end. But Isaiah Adams with a couple dunks. But the talent, as we've mentioned and chronicled throughout, is, is very visible. And it, this is the future. Oh, absolutely, and this is this is what um, this is what you know. I'm, this is why I'm still involved, and, and why why I come out. Uh, the um, uh, and not just the talent, the uh, the relationships with these with these kids and their parents, and and even their um, uh, AAU and high school coaches uh, has uh, you know kept me engaged, uh, watching these guys get better, uh, having fun with the process, getting to college. I mean, just a, just a, a myriad of, of of different things, just growing up. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, so I'm proud of what uh, uh, you know what Fab Frost and Super Soft. Uh, you know, have provided in terms of uh, opportunities uh, to be on SUV That's right. TV. I, I uh, enjoy it. Get <laughs> and, to see uh, the future beforehand and, and the development. Like, you know, I've seen out of this top 40 guys, I've seen seven or eight of them in person. And then at the CP3 Rising Camp, I've seen them. So you continue to see, and I can see the development of certain players that I've seen. And as you say, the relationship and uh, it's just outstanding, man. You guys run a, you guys always do a phenomenal job, and the alumni list will just continue to get longer. Oh, well, and I hope so. And I know that, um, and you guys, uh, you know, with your your role in covering uh, high school basketball, and you and you in particular with uh, uh, working many of these games, uh, uh, you're going to see these kids during out the, the year because even though they're in other places, they'll yep. be coming through in Atlanta, the the tournaments that you guys cover uh, as well, and. Um, uh, it's going to be uh, uh, it's going to continue on so uh, glad to be a part of it and, uh, and glad you guys were, uh, were here again for uh, uh, for the, uh, the 2017 edition. That's right 2017 the 8th annual Super Soft Camp has come to an end. The top 40 and the top 20 games were very entertaining and of course we had our special guest in Tyler Eulis. For David Dickerson I'm Joel Hillsman and the rest of our staff thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time down the road right here the SUV TV dot com. All right, peace. <laughs>